present Arthur Lowe, John LeBetra and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. <laughs> if the Cap Fits, featuring John Lorry, Arnold Ridley and Ian Lavender with this week's guests Edward Sinter and Fraser Carr. <laughs> Here is the news and this is John Snag reading it. The date is January 1941 and the bomber and fighter squadrons of the RAF continue to sweep across the skies of France and Germany in an endless effort to break the Nazi stranglehold. Meanwhile, in the side office of the church hall at Warnington on Sea, Captain Mannering, armed with the latest technical aids, prepares to give a lecture. Uh, now listen, Wilson. Uh, I want you to read the descriptions out in a loud, clear voice. Do you understand? Yes, sir. A loud, uh, clear voice. Yes, I don't want any mumbling. Do I ever mumble, sir? <laughs> Are you ready yet, Jones? Not quite, sir. Shan't be a tick. I'm very excited. We never had a lecture like this before, sir. That's what I like about you, Captain Manning. You're always trying out new modern scientific methods. Well, I try to keep abreast of the times, Jones. Well, there's no doubt about it, sir. The magic lantern is a wonderful invention. <laughs> yes, it's only been going a hundred years. I don't want any of that sort of talk, Wilson. Yeah, you're getting the slides out of order. Mr. Objector, I do not like the verger creeping round me when I'm trying to sort out my slides. Verger, you must stop creeping round Jones when he's trying to get his slides sorted out. I beg your pardon, Mr. Mannering, I am not creeping. Yes, you are. You're the biggest creeper I've ever met. <laughs> You're a troublemaker and a creeper. You're the troublemaker? I'm just here on the instructions of the vicar to keep an eye on his apparatus and to, see that you, and to see that you don't abuse it when you use it. I won't abuse it when I use it. And I'm going to see that you don't abuse it when you use it. Be quiet, both of you. Wilson, are the blackouts up in the hall and the screen set up? Oh, yes, sir. Why are we waiting? Why are what on earth's going on out there? I don't know, sir. It sounds like Fraser's voice. Who oh, is it? Yes, I thought so. Fraser! Fraser! There'll be enough of that. It'll be up when we're ready and not before. Hear this slide. It's in one of ours. It's a lot of Zulus dancing. <laughs> Get that in. That belongs to the vicar. It's his lecture, Light into Darkest Africa. <coughs> <laughs> What are you sniggering at, Wilson? <laughs> I just think it's a light into darkest Africa with the blackouts up. <laughs> yeah. Very amusing. <laughs> well, we're going, shall we? Hmm? Bring the slides, Jones. Sure. <laughs> right, settle down, everybody. <laughs> now, the subject of my lecture is Know Your Enemy. Light the candle, Wilson. Sir. Put the lights out, Pike. Yes, sir. Now, if you watch the screen, we shall show you pictures of Germans in uniform. And Sergeant Wilson will read out the notes on each one. Right. You ready for the first slide, Jones? Yes, sir. All ready. Ready to read out the notes, Wilson? Uh, almost, sir. Uh, what do you mean, almost? Well, my, uh, my monocle just needs a little slight polish, sir. Excuse me. <laughs> Very nice, sir. <coughs> Thank you, Wilson. First slide, please, Jones. Permission to speak, sir. Where's your clicker? What are you talking about? Your clicker, sir, that little metal frog that you click when you want me to change the slide. I haven't got one. Bird, you go and get the vicar's clicker. <laughs> You're not having the vicar's clicker. <laughs> case, Mr. Manley, would you mind saying click each time? No, oh, that'll do, sir. <laughs> Just put the first slide in. Right, here we go, sir. Click. Read on, Wilson. Hi, sir. Um, German private, infantry rifleman, front, field grey uniform. National colours on right side of steel helmet. Now, here are some interesting points. You'll notice the eyes. <laughs> Green, shifty. <laughs> Set too close together. Typically not, sir. Next slide, Jim. Click. Uh, private, infantry rifleman, rear. German eagle on left side of steel helmet. Now, uh, here's another very good point. You'll notice the nasty, fat, red bull neck. <laughs> Bulging over the collar. Typical feature of this. Watch out for it. Next slide. Click. Panzer grenadier, light machine gunner. 
I'd like to draw your attention to the ears. <laughs> no lobes. <laughs> this is well-known criminal trade. Excuse me, Mr. Mannering. Are there any nice-looking Germans? That will do, Pike. <laughs> Next slide, Jones. Click. Cabaret, private, first class. They wear very smart uniforms, don't they, Mr. Manry? I don't want any of that sort of talk, Pike. Not smart at all. That's, that's rubbish. <laughs> Four pieces in a few weeks. <laughs> all for show and not for blow. <laughs> not like our uniforms, plain, strong, sturdy, dependable, last forever. Made by British craftsmen. Why is my jacket all frayed then? That'll do, Fraser. <laughs> Carry on, Wilson. Aye, sir. Cavalrymen serving in reconnaissance units of hey. infantry divisions hey. belong to the. Hey, would you mind the... asking the sergeant to speak up? I can't hear a word he's saying. He's mumbling, he's mumbling. Can't any of you hear? Oh, oh, no. Wilson. Uh? How can I possibly hold their attention if you speak in that boring way? <laughs> You've got a very monotonous voice. You know. <laughs> Try and make it go up and down. Cavalry <laughs> men serving in reconnaissance units <laughs> of infantry divisions belong <laughs> to the infantry arm. <laughs> infantry of an armoured division that is designated. <laughs> designated. All, all right, all right. Was well, that going up and down enough, sir? <laughs> now. It's quite on the cards that the first Germans we shall meet will be parachutists. And I want to show several of these. C can we have the first parachutist, please, Jones? Click! <laughs> it's upside down! You've done it! You've done it! I knew you'd put one in upside down! It's not upside down! Of course it's upside down! It is upside down, isn't it, Wilson? Oh, yes. <laughs> Definitely upside down, sir. Jones yeah. could be right, Captain Mannering. Perhaps his parachute didn't he open and he's landed on his head. <laughs> Don't be absurd, Fraser. <laughs> Put it in the other way, Joe. All oh, right, so there we are. Click. And stop saying click. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Right, Wilson. Read on. Now, sir. Parachutist, second lieutenant. Parachutists may be expected to appear in overalls of colour, suited to terrain and weather conditions. Mr. Manreen, why has he got such tiny little legs? Oh, <laughs> He hasn't he got tiny little legs. It's his uniform. It's low in the clutch. <laughs> oh, I believe. Hmm. Well, now you come to mention it. There's definitely something odd. Stop it. <laughs> Have you mum? Stop it for protection. Pardon, sir, in case he lands on iron railings. <laughs> That's right, Jock, that's quite right. Don't forget, Mr. Mannering. They don't lock it up them, you know, so they get <laughs> all right. How do you do, Jones? Yes, you may have a point there, Fraser. <laughs> all the iron railings have been taken for scrap. Ah, but the Germans don't know that, God. <laughs> Where's his gun then, sir? Maybe he left it on the plane when he jumped. Don't let him do it, <laughs> Next slide. German Navy, Admiral of the Line, the number of rings. Just wall. a minute, just, just, just a minute, Wilson. Yes. Jones. Yes. Can, can we have the slide, please? Yes, sir, sorry, sir. I've got, I've got in a bit of a muddle here, you see, sir. Here, here, don't you mishandle the vicar's equipment? Oh. <laughs> you stop interfering, Mr. Yateman. Hurry up and sort it out, Jones. Yeah, right, sir, right, sir. It's all, it's all, right, it's all right, sir, now. I've got it now. Right, read it out again, please, Wilson. All right, sir. German Navy, Admiral of the Line. Click. <laughs> <laughs> it's an African lady with no clothes on. <laughs> Sorry, sir, I think I made a boob. <laughs> Don't look sick. You're too young. <laughs> if we had admirals like that, I think I'd re-enlist. <laughs> well, you look at those thighs. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Jones, switch off the lantern. Yes, sir, yes, sir. I think that's enough for today. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that, sir. I just got a bit mixed up there, sir. Oh, I knew you would. I knew you would. Well, I wouldn't if you hadn't been creeping round me all the time. I wasn't creeping. Be quiet, you two. Be quiet. Pike, switch lights on. <coughs> Fraser, Godfrey, see to the black hats. Right, sir. Wilson, come in the office, will you? All right, sir. Right. 
Close the door. All right, sir. <clears throat> Al Cam. Yes? I didn't say anything to you out there just now, because I didn't want to show you up in front of the men. I don't know what you're talking about, sir. I'm referring to that absurd eyeglass you're wearing. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You look like an advertisement for Sharp's Toffee. <laughs> I wear this monocle because I have a weak right eye. Weak right eye, my foot. Why can't you wear glasses like everybody else? Anyway, <coughs> sergeants aren't allowed to wear monocles. They're for officers only. <laughs> show me where it says in King's regulations that sergeants aren't allowed to wear monocles. I don't have to show you. I mean, who ever heard of a sergeant wearing a monocle? Yeah, but if it comes to that, who ever heard of an officer wearing arch support? Leave my feet out of <laughs> If you don't go on about my eyes, I won't go on about your feet. Now, look here. Don't let's get childish about this. Come in. Come, on, sir. Yes, what is it, Fraser? I'll come straight to the point. During the time we've been together, you have wasted hours of our precious time, and tonight's lecture was the last straw. But, uh, now, look here. Let please. me finish. <laughs> I have made a careful note of it all. On November 6, 1940, he wasted three hours giving us a lecture on why Germans don't play cricket. <laughs> on January 28, 1941, he gave us a lecture telling us how Hitler, when he's in a rage, bites the carpet. <laughs> Well-known fact that he does. Maybe, but he then proceeded to waste two hours working out a plan on how to send him a poisoned hearth rug. <laughs> According to my notes, it comes to a total of 438 hours wasted on useless blather. <laughs> That's how I feel, and I had to come out with it just in your face. No offence. No offence intended. <laughs> That's all. Oh, I've never heard anything like that in all my life. It's, it's rank insubordination. Yes, it was rather strong. Strong? I'm sick and tired of Fraser's grumbling. He never stops. He's been a thorn in my side ever since this unit was formed. Every day he grumbles about something. Gr Wait a minute. Grumbling. Grumbling. Where is it now? I beg your pardon, sir. Ah, I've got it. I've just remembered something I read in this Home Guard manual last week. Where is it? Yes, here we are. Man management. There is a sure cure for this form of unnecessary grousing, but a bad CO or NCO may be afraid to try it. It is simply the temporary exchange of rank. Let the grumbler have a free hand to run the section or platoon and learn for himself that it is not so easy. Well, I'm not afraid to try it. Come with me, Wilson. Yes, sir. All right, now, men. Pay attention. Sit down. Quiet. I'd just like to say that of late I get the distinct impression, and I'm pretty sensitive to this sort of thing, that there is among the ranks a certain lack of confidence in my leadership. Mr. Speaker, sir, I wish to make a statement, sir. I look at it this way. An officer is an officer, sergeant is a sergeant, last corporal is a last corporal, and a private is a private. Yeah. What's that got to do with it? <laughs> Well, nothing really, but I thought I ought to say it. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Jim. <coughs> now, I feel that it isn't fair to blame the many for the errors of the few. Here, here. I'm very glad you made that interruption, Fraser. Because it just underlines the point that I'm trying to make. You are the chief culprit. Me? Yes, you. When it comes to grumbling and grousing and discontent, you are always at the bottom of it. But, uh, I've only this one thing to say to you, Fraser. Uh, 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 and this applies to any of you. If you think you can run this platoon any better than I can, you're damn welcome to try for a couple of days. You can move into my office and take over now. That's taking the wind out of his sails, Wilson. Now, has anybody anything to say to that? I. I have. What is it, Fraser? Give us your peps. <laughs> now then, well, son. Let's have another look at your stock book. Well, there you are, Fraser. Come, Captain Fraser, if you don't mind. Let me see, then. 
<laughs> Just as I thought, there's a discrepancy. Eight yards of four by two missing and unaccounted for. Yes, but... You uh, can't uh, whittle your way out of it with me, man. Yes, if you, if you look at the overall figures... Don't you... lean on my desk. Stand to your attention when you're addressing an officer. <laughs> Sorry, but perhaps I, I, I gave the chaps a bit extra or something. Precisely. Inefficiency and extravagance or even maybe corruption. Well, that's it. You're busted. I beg your pardon. <laughs> you heard me. You must eat. Get them off. But... <laughs> Get what off? Those stripes. I want those stripes, Private Wilson. Oh, and uh, on your way out, you can tell that old fool Jones to come in. Now, look at you, 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 you can't you treat me in this way. Yes, but really, About I... About to... Turin! Quick, march! Left, right, left, right, left, right. That settled his harsh. I don't... You want to see me, Jock? Cut! Ten freezer to you. <laughs> what do you think these are on my shoulder? Orange peps. No, I want to make it quite clear where you stand from the start. I think you are a woolly minded old ditherer. Woolly minded old ditherer? <laughs> well, at least your hearing is sound. <laughs> what do you think? I'm resigning. I wouldn't soldier under you, not if the king himself asked me. I shall reduce myself down to the ranks with the immediate effect from now. I'm going. I'm good, Red and Steve. And you needn't come round my shop asking for sausages. <laughs> the answer will be in the negative. <laughs> you all right, Mr Jones? <laughs> I'm two full words, Pikey. Uh, I don't think Mr Fraser's cut out to be an officer. Now, Captain Mannering, he's a gentleman. An officer should always be gentleman. Well, I think he ought never to have let Captain Fraser take over. Even if it is for only 48 hours. Mike! And here! Oh, golly. <laughs> Come in, sir. Where's Mr. Mannering, Godfrey? Uh, he's moved to that little dressing room at the side of the stage where the vicar stores his costumes. Move that pantomime horse off the chair and sit down, Rosen. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Isn't it, uh, isn't it a bit cramped in here for you? Well, I'll move some more of the vicar's dresses out later. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> still in a couple of days. Now then. How's Fraser getting on? Well, he really is going too far, sir. Well, surely you can handle him. Well, he busted me. <laughs> he what? <laughs> he busted me, reduced me to the ranks. Ah. Now, that's a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> give him enough rope, and he'll hang himself. What? What reason did he give for busting him? Well, well, some trifling discrepancy in the store's account. Eight yards of four by two. I mean, I ask you. Well, I've warned you many times. You're far too lackadaisical in these matters. Anyway, he told me in the most offensive manner to get my stripes off, and uh, I think you should do something about it. Very well. I will. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. I'll lend you my scissors. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm sorry, Wilson. You'll just have to get on parade and soldier on as a private. Yes, Richard, he'll be very rude to me, and I cannot stand people being rude to me. My heart pounds terribly, and I have to sit down. <laughs> you don't sit down when I'm rude, you? Well, I, I don't take any notice of you. <laughs> Ah, Joe. I'm sorry, Mr. Manry. I'll go through fire and brimstone and treacle for you. <laughs> I cannot serve under a common man. I've resigned my non-commission. <laughs> there you are, Wilson. He's playing at our hands. Uh, how do you make that out, sir? He's turning the platoon against himself. No one will serve under him, and then, of course, he's done for. Yes, Pike? Uncle Arthur? Uh, Shall I tell Mum you'll be round for supper? Because Captain Fraser says I can go home now with good news. Good news? What good news? Captain Fraser says I've got hidden qualities of drive, tenacity, and leadership. <laughs> so he's made me a sergeant. He's what? He's out of his mind. <laughs> oh, I, I nearly forgot. Captain Manrin? Yeah? He says, can he have your gloves and stick? <laughs> hey! Uh, good afternoon. I'm General Mingus. Oh, sir. Are you the commander of this unit? Aye, General, that I am. Uh, well, I have just taken over the area command. <laughs> I'm glad they had the sense to put a Scotsman in charge. And where are you from? The Isle of Barra. Oh. It's a wild and lonely place, you understand. <laughs> the life is hard, 
And so are the men. Aye, <laughs> that's the sort we need these days. <laughs> and how are the things of the unit, Captain? Well, the farm it has been a terrible day. I've discovered that a sergeant has been on the fiddle, so I've busted him. I see. Uh, can you find a replacement? Oh, yes, it'll be done. Uh, well, obviously everything's under control <laughs> here. I that it is. Oh, uh, by the way, Captain, uh, do you play the pipes? The pipes? <laughs> I that I do. Hey, well, I'm planning a Highland get-together at HQ Officers' Mess. I'd be delighted if you'd pipe the haggis in for us. <laughs> It'd be a rare honour. Uh, good. <laughs> I'll send an invitation for you and your unit. Meanwhile, carry on the good work. I will not, sir, I will not. Goodbye, then, Captain Mannering. Goodbye. What is it? Mannering. Mannering. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Come in. Ah, oh, Wilson. Ah, oh, nice to see you back in your office, sir. Thank you. Yes, well, the men are all waiting in rows. In row. <laughs> this isn't an allotment, Wilson. <laughs> you mean in ranks? How are they? Well, we're all rather relieved that things are back to normal and that you're in command again, sir. Naturally. But I think Fraser's learned his lesson. Well, I hope we all have, sir. <laughs> after, after you, sir. Thank you, Wilson. <laughs> Settle down, everybody. <laughs> well... Now that, uh, that things are back to normal, I'm sure that you'd like me to thank Fraser for making such a spirited attempt to run the platoon. I'm sure that he now realises some of the problems involved, and no doubt is very relieved to be a squaddy again. <laughs> but Captain Manning, I no talking in the ranks, Fraser. <laughs> I think Captain Fraser made a very good job of it. Well, I don't. I'd like to second that, and I'd like to unsecond it. <laughs> yes, well now, it's all over. And I'm sure that we've all benefited from the experience. Now, quite out of the blue, we've received an invitation from Major General Menzies. Mangies. I beg your pardon? It's pronounced Mangies. Is it? <laughs> Good. <laughs> well, General Mangies has invited us to take part in the ceremonial piping of the haggis at... HQ officers mess tomorrow night. And I think you'll agree that the general is showing us a great honour by selecting us for this ancient ritual. Oh, well, it happened this way, sir. The general was very I impressed. I told you my before, Fraser. I will not have talking in the ranks. Yes, sir. Now I want you all to be especially well turned out. Every eye will be upon us. <laughs> I think you ought to know. For the last my... time, Fraser, stop talking. <laughs> very well. But upon your own head, be it. <laughs> Good evening, Sergeant. Good evening, Sergeant. Warmington on sea escort party reporting for duty. Ah, good. Uh, will you all come in, please? Thank you. Oh, it's a nice big place. Oh, shit. Hey, Oh, by the way, I'm Sergeant Mackenzie, and I've been detailed to fill you in on the ceremony. Thank you, Sergeant Mackenzie. When you're all ready, you'll go through those double doors, Nicole. I see. Now, first of all, this is the haggis. Oh, it looks like one of the sweet puddings when he's gone wrong. <laughs> We shall need a bearer to carry the haggis. I'd like to volunteer, sir, to bear that. I'd enjoy bearing that, sir, and I'd consider it an honour as well. It should be a sergeant, sir, by rights. Oh, oh, very well. Will you be the bearer, Wilson? Oh, yes, I'd absolutely love to. <laughs> then we need two men on the doors to the dining hall. Godfrey? Right. Yes, yes, right. yes, sir, yes. The escort goes two abreast behind the haggis. Now, once you're inside the dining hall, it's... Twice round the table, and then you present the haggis to the president. Is that clear? Yes, I think so. Well, I'll go into the hall, and when they're ready, I'll give you three loud tappies with my paste stick on the floor. That's the signal for the party to advance for the haggis. Is that plain? Quite plain, thank you, Sergeant. Very good, sir. Oh, well. Uh, and here's the bagpipes. Ah, good. Someone good to play us in. <laughs> Aye, you are. Me? Of course. That's why you're here, isn't it? Well, I'm going into the hall now. Now, don't forget. Wait for my tapis. Now will he let me speak. 
It was me the general invited. Me, because of the way I was handling the platoon. Indeed. Now you're sunk, Captain Mannering. And there's only one thing you can do. Let me go in at the head of my platoon, play in the pipes, and let me take the credit I deserve. There go the knocks. They're sounding your doom. <laughs> Nemesis has struck. Private Fraser, get back in the ranks. Eh? Hey? Man, oh man, you're a bigger fool than I thought. Right. Here goes. I'll just warm the pipes up. Are you absolutely sure you're doing the right thing, sir? <laughs> Don't worry, Wilson. I spent my honeymoon at Inversnecky. Oh. <laughs> it's a wild and lonely place, you understand. The nights were long. And there was nothing else to do. <laughs> right, friend. Follow me. I never doubted you could do it, sir. Never for a moment. Never a single moment. That episode of Dad's Army, based on the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft. You heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John LaMajor as Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Lodder, Private Fraser, Arnold Ridley, Private Godfrey, Ian Lavender, Private Pike, Edward Stinter, The Verger, and Fraser Carr as General Mangus and Sergeant McKenzie. If the Cap Fits was adapted for radio by Michael Knowles and Harold Snowd and produced by John Dials. <laughs>